Hey y'all, Stephen Rosell here, Senior Technical Specialist with Autodesk, and I'm going to cover part five of the Bifrost Basics demo series that I've been putting out. And we're going to continue where we left off talking about compounds. Now, if you'll remember, we created a compound called My Noise Deformer, and we externalized that so that it could be reused again by myself or by any other artist. Now, if I wanted to change the underlying structure of this, what you'll notice is if I dive into my noise deformer, and let's say, for instance, I want to change something that is not exposed uh, as, a, as a connection into the node network, something like frequency. I can control the magnitude, and I can control the timing with the, the uh, time scale. Uh, but let's say I wanted to change frequency. The frequency right now, you'll see, is locked. So if I were to go in here and just try to change the frequency, nothing happens because the, the attribute, the parameter, is locked. Likewise, if I wanted to expose that as a connection, I can't really do that. So if I come in here and try to drag and drop a connection, I can't do that. And you'll notice in the lower left-hand corner, this says not editable, referenced. So by nature, by default, when you bring a compound into Maya, from an externalized JSON file, it will automatically do that as a reference. So it's essentially a pointer to that compound, that, that JSON file. It's also indicated by this kind of blue diamond icon. You'll notice if you go to the reference editor, anytime you're dealing with file references, you'll see that blue icon. So that's Maya's kind of indication that whatever it is you're working on is actually outside of the Maya scene. So this is externalized in the file system somewhere, and we're just simply pointing to it. Now, there are two ways of getting around this. One is by converting this into a unique compound. So again, right now, I can't change this at all. If I wanted to delete something, it's not going to let me delete anything. I can't rewire anything. But by selecting that, I can right-click and make editable. And what that will do is it will essentially make it a, a unique copy, essentially, of that node network. So it's no longer a pointer. It's now an actual copy. Now I can dive into this, and I can go to the fractal noise, and I can change something like frequency. So you can see frequency now becomes editable. So I can go in, and I can dial that up to 20, and now you can see that I'm getting a much kind of uh, higher uh, frequency for the noise pattern that I'm creating. I can also go in and I can make connections. So I can now go in and I can say, I want to publish that frequency or kind of make it available upstream. So I connect it to the input node. And now from here, you can see frequency becomes an option. So let's move that up and then I'll just connect frequency here. And now from Maya, I have control over all of that. I have control over not only the speed, but the strength, but also the frequency. So let's bump the frequency up to uh, whatever, five, and we'll play this back. And now I can start to kind of edit this. Let's make it 0.3, and now it gets much broader uh, and less uh, repetitive. At any rate, now I've, I'm making changes to the underlying node network. The problem is this becomes a kind of a one-off now. So if I wanted to reuse this with the new frequency controls, I would have to basically create a new copy of this. So I'd have to right click and I'd have to publish this as something like my noise deformer two or my noise deformer B, or I could overwrite the original one if I chose to. But oftentimes when you're working like in a studio environment, you'll have someone building these for you and you want to be able to make changes along the way. So for instance, if it's some sort of a solver, the architect of that solver, the person who design that solver can add functionality to it, or they can fix bugs, and they can make it available to everyone without having to constantly convert the original one. So I'm going to talk a little bit about how to do that next. So let's reload the scene. And now we're back to where we started. We have my noise deformer as a reference. So this is a pointer to the JSON file. So let's say that I want to make core changes to this compound, and I want everybody to be able to take advantage of those changes. Now, I wouldn't do that by converting this into an editable compound. What I would do is most likely overwrite the original, and I can do that by actually just simply editing the JSON file. So what I'm going to do is just tab over to a text editor that I have loaded. I'm using Sublime, but you could use anything. And in here, I want to make a few changes. So what I want to do is First of all, let's just change the values. I will search for frequency. There we go. 
And what you can see is I've got a value on the fractal noise node called frequency. And right now it's set to a value of 1, 1F, one which is float. So I can set this to be something like uh, 20. And then I can save this out. And then the next time that I open that scene with a new instance of Maya, that will be updated. So now with that same scene loaded after restarting Maya, what you'll see is if I go into the compound and I take a look at fractal noise, sure enough, the frequency is set to 20. And when I play this back, that's the result that I see. I see a much higher frequency in the, the kind of undulating noise effect. But you can take it a lot farther than that. You can create new attributes. You can create new connections. You can create new inputs into this compound. So let's take it a step further. And let's say that I want to make frequency available to any artist that is using this compound. It's something that they couldn't control before, but now I want them to be able to control it. So as a technical artist or a technical director or whatever, I would come in and I would make the changes uh, either directly in the JSON file or overriding the JSON file. But let's actually just take one of the attributes that's there and kind of copy it. So remember, I have speed and strength that are connecting into the noise deformer. I'm going to use the same kind of paradigm here, except I'm just going to copy those. So let's go to the top of the file, and I'll just search for speed. And sure enough, there we have speed. I'm actually just going to take those three lines, and I'm going to copy and paste those. And it looks like actually I have to get all of these. There we go. And let's go here, paste that. I'm going to change this to frequency, like so. Uh, except I want to use a capital F there. Uh, I'll go through and I'll search for the next entry of speed. So uh, that created the attribute. And then this is actually creating the input. So I'm going to do the same thing here. Uh, this is inside the compound itself. So I'm going to go in and copy that. And then right there, I'll paste that in. And once again, we'll call this frequency, like so. Uh, it doesn't really matter what the default value is, because I'm going to override that with a connection. Let's go and find any other speed entries. And this is actually describing the connection. So not only are we creating the attribute, if, but if I dive in here, we have to create the connection. You can see that speed right now is connected to a value node, which is driving the, the scale, the multiply of time. So I'm connecting um, value node to dot value. So I essentially have to figure out what the equivalent is there. So what I want to do is basically take all this right here. I'll just copy that and I'll paste it in here. I know that I want this to be called frequency. And if I have to spell that correctly, of course. Uh, and this is not value two dot value because I don't want to overwrite that connection. What I'm actually going to be connecting to is fractal noise dot frequency. And that's all lowercase. So I'll just come in here and I'll replace this with fractal noise. There it is right there. And this is also called frequency. So assuming I spelled everything correctly and assuming I didn't get any syntax wrong, I can basically save this out. And now anybody who is pointing to that compound is now going to automatically get that new functionality. They're going to be able to connect to this new frequency attribute. So once again, I'll close Maya. So now in a new session of Maya, I'll just simply reload that same file. And as I said, if I did everything correctly, I should have a frequency attribute here. So right now the frequency appears to be set to zero, which is, uh, oh, actually, no, it's set to one. Um, but I have nothing connected here. If I dive in, you can see that the frequency is indeed connected to the frequency of the fractal noise node. So all I have to do is make that available to the artist. So I just simply go in here and I'll create a connection that creates frequency as an option for my input on the Bifrost graph. So now when I come in and push play, not only can I change speed and strength, but I can go in here and I can change the frequency. Let's bump that up to something like 10. And now you can see, as you would expect, I get a really high frequency. Now I can dial this down to something like 0.2 or 1 or whatever, and I can start to play with the frequency in the same way that I would experiment with the, the speed and the strength. Hopefully that makes sense. Again, it's just kind of two different ways of working. If you just need to make a quick change and it's a one-off, that's fine. But oftentimes you need to make a change that will be reflected in multiple files that are using that node and, and oftentimes by multiple people who are referencing that node. So, But just by changing the underlying text file, 
uh, you can do that. Or if you need to just overwrite it with a new one, you can as well. So that wraps this one up. Uh, I'll see you in the next demo. Thanks for your time. Bye.